Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There it is. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 36th annual recognition ceremony for the Central Virginia Governor's School for Science and Technology. My name is Dr. Stephen Smith, and I have the privilege and the pleasure of serving as the director and one of the seven instructors here at the Governor's School. And I am so happy that we are able to have this event for our seniors. They've earned it. Now, I already mentioned to you how grateful we are to our friends at Heritage High School, and specifically to Mr. Tim Beatty, the principal, who is a longtime friend of the Governor's School, and Mr. Larry Hart, who is the director of Pioneer Theater, and who is in the middle of preparing for a production of Cinderella that starts in two weeks. So if you can, come on out, see the production, they're great. But he let us use his space while they're getting ready for their production, and we really appreciate his doing that. He also built these stairs with handrails for our students, and we appreciate that as well. So this is gonna be a great afternoon. This is gonna be a celebration. We are gonna celebrate the achievements of our students and the contributions of our program partners. We are gonna celebrate hard work and achievement, tenacity and perseverance. We are gonna celebrate leadership and teamwork and resilience. That's why we're here. And more importantly, we are gonna celebrate the CBGS class of 2021. Now I need to acknowledge that due to pandemic restrictions, we can't have all our friends and family here with us. And that's not what any of us want. However, Mr. Steele is doing a live stream on our Facebook channel. And we have a CBGS graduate from the class of 2013, Mr. Bradley Wetzel, who is filming this so he can create a video for us that we will put on our YouTube channel. And so our students will be able to come back and see that video year after year. So we're very excited about that. While we can't all physically be in the same space, I know that the CBGS community stands side by side in spirit, and we are absolutely and unequivocally stronger together. Now, one of the parts I love about this ceremony is that we get to highlight some of our students. And so we have some messages of gratitude and thanks that are gonna be brought to you by our 11 CVGS ambassadors. And I'm excited to announce that our first ambassador who is coming to the stage now is Miss Brooke Eby. program by recalling why the Governor's School was established in 1985. The Governor's School mission is to be a dynamic educational community, a community that develops leaders who possess the research and technical skills, the global perspective, and the vision needed to address the challenges of our rapidly changing society. Clearly, this mission is as important today as it was in 1985, and perhaps even more so as we adapt to the challenges of a global pandemic. My fellow students and I appreciate the time, energy, and resources invested into our education, not only by the CVGS staff, but also by the many others who support the Governor's School program. The educational opportunities at the Governor's School require the support of our superintendents, school boards, principals, business partners, and our CVGS families. So now we'll take a few moments to specifically acknowledge some of the people who support the Governor's School. You should now see on the screen the name of each school division and under it, the name of the division superintendent, school board representative, and division advocate, all of whom support CVGS. Hi, I'm Drew Flint. While central office administrators and policymakers are essential to our program, the principals and administrative teams at each of our base schools are also very important. 
These administrators support CVGS by promoting the program to prospective students, by considering governor school students when creating their building's master schedules, and by advocating for our students on a day-to-day -day basis. Also working in the Bay Schools to, prom to promote our program are the other members of the CVGS School Advisory Board. This board assists us in implementing policies, supporting individual students, and coordinating activities to minimize scheduling conflicts between Governor School and Bay Schools. We sincerely appreciate the time and dedication of our School Advisory Board members, and now you should see a list of the high school principals and their school counselors who make up the CVGS School Advisory Board. Thank you all so much for your support. Thanks, Drew. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Salmon. While our principals and school advisory board members work at the school level, the CVGS Foundation Board and Industrial Advisory Board work at the community and regional levels. Many of the members of these boards are CVGS graduates or the parents or current of current or former CVGS students. These two boards help raise funds and develop partnerships between CVGS and regional businesses and industry leaders. We are truly thankful for the energy and expertise of our board members. The CVGS Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit, and the Foundation Board works to raise funds for and manage the CVGS Foundation Endowment. CVGS parents, graduates, and community partners donate to the Foundation, and their donations are invested. The Endowment's earnings pay for what we call our Margin of Excellence activities. These activities include supporting highly specialized student research projects and funding research trips, paying for the purchase of advanced technology like our scanning electron microscope, 3D printers, and drones, and providing funding for our CVGS Honor Courts and all the student awards and scholarships, which will be presented this afternoon. In addition, this fall, the CVGS Foundation stepped up to buy fabric face masks for all CVGS students and pay for hotspots for CVGS families with unreliable internet connectivity. These are the names of the current members of our CVGS Foundation Board. A single asterisk indicates a graduate of CVGS, and two of them indicates a parent of a current or graduated CVGS student. Thanks, Katie. My name is Ashley Loveless, and I have the pleasure of sharing the name of another CVGS board, the Governor's School Industrial Advisory Board. Like the Foundation Board, our Industrial Advisory Board, or IAB, is very important to our program. Our IAB members help secure placements or, this year, guest speakers for our internship program. They assist with our senior engineering bridge project, provide feedback at our annual research symposium, serve on our scholarship selection committee, and help us acquire and repair our technical equipment. Members of this board are also essential to the mission of the Governor's School, and these are the names of the current members of our CVGS Industrial Advisory Board. Again, a single asterisk indicates a CVGS graduate, and two asterisks indicates a parent of a current CVGS student or a CVGS graduate. Now I invite Abigail Swanberg to assist with the recognition of our internship sponsors and mentors. As Ashley said, my name is Abigail Swanberg. Last year was the 35th year of the CVGS internship program, and it was a year unlike any other. In the winter of 2020, 2019, Dr. Douglas and Ms. Shamont met with each of us individually, discussed our preferences for internships, and arranged placements for all 68 of us. Then in February, we started our internships on location. However, in mid-March, that pandemic changed it all. As schools closed throughout the state, we could no longer safely participate in internships on site. Our internship sponsors were understanding and flexible, and while some sponsors were able to redesign the internships to make them completely virtual, other volunteers moved for exploration talks via Zoom for spring of 2020. Due to the hard work and commitment of all those who support CVGS as well as the special nature of the Governor's School program, CVGS was able to move from fully on site to fully online synchronous instruction, including the necessary adaptations to our internships without any loss of instructional time. Thank you, Abigail. Hi, my name's Alicia Mays. This year, the pandemic continued to impact the CVGS program, and our mentors and internship sponsors continued to rise to the challenge. Rather than on-site internships, we had fantastic speakers meet with our juniors throughout the second semester, and the juniors have benefited greatly from these experiences. While not all of our internship sponsors were able to meet with our students through Zoom this, through Zoom this spring, 
We want to recognize all companies who did. We are also including in this list the names of companies who have provided internships in pre-pandemic years. We are so grateful to those who invest their time and knowledge into our internship program. And we are looking forward to the spring of 2022, when we are confident we will have all of our juniors back on location for their internship experiences. Now several other CVGS ambassadors will share information with you about one of the most exciting leadership opportunities here at the Governor's School, the CVGS Ambassador Program. Hello, my name is Brooke Spencer. Being selected by the faculty to serve as a CVGS ambassador is an honor, as many seniors apply, but there are a limited number of positions available. Before the pandemic required CVGS to limit on-site activities, the primary task of the CVGS ambassadors was to give tours of the Governor's School to visiting middle schoolers, business leaders, and prospective students. In addition, ambassadors would also welcome and assist students and their parents at our program overview nights and make presentations at both new student orientation and foundation events. The pandemic changed the nature of the work CVGS ambassadors do, but not its importance. Next, Melanie will tell you about how we assisted CVGS even while social distancing and limits for on-site activities were in place. Hi, my name is Melanie Bowling, and serving as a CVGS ambassador this year has been a wonderful opportunity to represent the program and learn more about how we can still reach out to our future Griffins even during a pandemic. While Dr. Smith and Dr. Douglas were not able to travel to each of our 10 participating high schools this year, they did host virtual events for prospective students from each school division. The faculty held two virtual program overview nights and CVGS ambassadors attended each of these virtual events. We shared with the interested students our perspectives on the CVGS experience and what we had to offer each of them. At the end of each of these events, we were available in the Zoom room to answer questions from the 10th graders in attendance. If you'd like to see a recording of these events, I invite you to go to our school YouTube channel called simply CVGS Director. All right, hello everybody, I'm Andrew Chi, and I work with Brooke Evie, who you met at the beginning of the program, and Ben Bankston, who you'll meet uh, next to assist with the Central Virginia Regional Science Fair. Exploring research through an independent project is a keystone part of the Governor's School experience. Typically, CVDS students and some of the other brightest minds in the region meet in March to present a year's worth of, ex of research. The experience is nail-biting, but rewarding. For me and many others, the nervousness while interacting with the judges were well worth the new forms of research we were, we were exposed to and inspired to pursue. When COVID-19 transformed the science fair to a virtual format, some of our ambassadors, who at the time were well-versed in Zoom technology, were able to play their part in making the fair a great experience for juniors. We mirrored our previous science fairs as closely as possible to provide the best experience by scheduling their presentation times, running the virtual interface, and sometimes maybe looking a little extra intimidating to ensure that they get that same nail-biting feeling. Our willingness to pay it forward and help others is one of the things that makes CBGS students special. And now I'll be doing just that by helping everyone in the audience get a chance to meet Ben Bankston. Thank you so much. And as Andrew said, my name is Ben Bankston. There was a special new opportunity for us CBGS ambassadors this year, an opportunity that was shared with just a few other CBGS seniors. This was to work with Dr. Smith and serve as group leaders for the CBGS Leadership, Teamwork, and Communication Tech Lab. This lab is all about students at the Governor's School learning skills that I constantly hear students at my base school say that they wish they had the formal chance to learn about. This class is exactly what it sounds like. Watching videos, reading articles, and even learning how to use practical skills like effectively managing time and showing others you're listening through appropriate body language. The LTC Tech Lab at Gov School is unlike any class I'd ever taken in high school but it helped me realize that it's not the last one like it that I'd like to take. Serving as a group leader meant that ambassadors worked ahead in the lab to ensure its quality and effectiveness of the content and experience in its first year entirely online. Ironically enough, doing this work required us to use some of the skills taught in the lab to get work done on time, meet virtually, collaborate with our other co-leaders, and run a group Zoom with other Gov School students once a week to practice and talk about the skills that had just been taught. The LTC lab experience is one that I wouldn't trade for any other. And now allow me to invite Holland's Pierpoint to tell you a little bit more about it.
Thanks, Ben. And my name is Hollins Pierpoint. And as Ben mentioned, the group Zoom discussions were an important aspect of the LTC lab. And leading group discussion like these was a new experience for all the student group leaders. So, in order to pro provide more guidance and support for exactly how to do this, Dr. Smith asked for a small group of volunteers to have group discussions on LTC topics two weeks in advance, record those discussions, and post them as models for other group, the other group leaders. Ben and I, along with fellow ambassadors Brooke, Brooke Eby, Abigail Swanberg, Drew Flint, and two other seniors, Sam Hartless and Daryl Sneed, volunteered for this experience. As the model discussion group, we were guided in how to lead LTC discussions, as well as given the opportunity to, to participate ourselves. Dr. Smith slowly introduced us to the idea of leading by guiding the first discussion, then stepping back so we could practice and better understa understand the mechanics ourselves. All of the volunteers who were part of this group led discussions based on the week's assignments during at least one meeting. Not only was I given the ability to lead this group, but I used the prompts and information mentioned by others to more effectively guide my own LTC group. I could tell through this experience that I was better prepared for leading discussion and the students who participated in my group enjoyed the experience fully. Like all the CBGS ambassadors, I am proud to represent our school and help the program serve its students so well. Thank you, Holland. Now standing up here on a stage, with a crowd and being live streamed and being recorded is a little intimidating even for me. And I've been doing this a while. So I'd like you all to join me and congratulate our ambassadors for an excellent job this afternoon. <laughs> working with students like ours is a blessing and a delight. But working at the Governor's School does come with some challenges. There are only nine of us on the team, and so each of us has to wear multiple hats to provide the type of program we want for our students. Time does not permit me to recognize every member of our team and thank them for all they have done. Certainly not to say all the thanks I would need to for the past two years and all the ways they have adapted and overcome the challenges of the pandemic. However, we do have one team member who is celebrating what we call a milestone of service. We have one team member who has served 10 years at the Governor's School. Over the past 10 years, this instructor has developed, refined, or coordinated more technology labs than any other team member. In addition, this instructor has taught every student who has come through the Governor's School for the last decade. Now he could do this because he coordinates the Fall Bridge Project for the seniors and he teaches engaging lessons and labs to all the juniors. In addition, this team member is the CVGS Partnership, Internship, Industrial Advisory Board, and Scholarship Coordinator, as well as our Assistant Director. And so, while our current students don't have as much opportunity to appreciate this, I'm gonna show you some photos to also demonstrate that this is one of our most spirited team members at the Governor's School. And so now, please join me in inviting to the stage to be recognized, Dr. Mr. Scott Douglas. I picked those myself. I'm the one on the right. <laughs> Let's give another hand for a decade of Dr. Douglas. That's an angry bird. I don't know if you guys knew that. He actually crashed into boxes. Well, okay. At CVGS, students move from independent research to working in teams, and from studying concepts in math and science to applying those concepts as they use advanced technologies. We create leaders by bringing capable students together and providing new and challenging opportunities, and our students always rise to those challenges. As Mr. Howard has always said, 
The students at the Governor's School are the best and brightest in the region. And among the best and brightest, there are some students who distinguish themselves even further. If you'll look at your program, you'll see a list of seniors toward the back of it. And next to each name, you will see an indicator. You might see a single asterisk. This would mean that that student earned straight A's in at least one marking period in the current year. Now this is a significant accomplishment given the rigor of our courses. And next to some names, you might see two asterisks. Those students have earned straight A's in each marking period, in every marking period this year so far. And then finally, there are some students who have three asterisks next to their names. These students have earned straight A's in every marking period in both the junior and senior year. And we call these our straight A all-stars. And I'm gonna invite Dr. Scott Douglas back to the stage so he can help us recognize these students. Dr. Douglas. All right, um, I'm now going to read the names and I ask that each student please stand at his or her seat and remain standing until every name is called. I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all students are standing and then we can applaud for these students and their remarkable achievement. In the spirit of equity, I'm gonna call these names in alphabetical order starting at the end of the alphabet. Uh, so I will begin, here we go. Sean Weger, Randy Trost, Joshua Tips, Daryl Sneed, Katie Salmon, Yimmy Ribbler, Andrew Chi, Hollins Pierpoint, Stephen Merholtz, Adam Lee, Will Langford, Megan Knight, Sam Height, Anne Francis Harrison, Ryan Gallagher, Drew Flint, Haley Irsing, Will Dewis, Melanie Bowling, Ben Barnett, and Ben Bankston. Congratulations to these exceptional students. Now Dr. Smith will announce the course specific awards. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Don't go too far away. <laughs> For the next awards, when I announce the name, I ask that each student stand at his or her seat to be recognized. And this time, audience members, we're going to applaud for each student. Then the student will be seated before I announce the next award. Each of these awards comes with an engraved CVGS medal, and the student's medal is going to stay here on stage, and the student will receive it near the end of our ceremony. But for now, if your name is called, please just stand up at your seat to be recognized. The first course specific award is for Connections in Mathematics, Mr. Ben Barnett. Thank you, ben. The next award is for Calculus One, Ashley Stage. For Calculus 1 and 2, Joshua Tips. For Advanced Mathematics, Eden Allen. For Human Anatomy and Physiology, Haley Irsing. For computer science, Will Dewis. Now there is a special award for students who go above and beyond in the senior seminar technology course. While this year the technology lab experience was different than any other year, there were three students who worked just as hard and accomplished just as much or more 
than any students in any other year. And the faculty is delighted to recognize these three students and honor them for their work in the senior seminar course. Students, please stand when your name is called and we will applaud for each of you individually. The first student, Brooke Eby. Next, Hollins Pierpoint. And third, Daryl Sneed. At this time, we have several special awards. The first special award is the Alumni Book Award. And we have a video from a very special CVGS graduate to provide some background on this award. Now, this is where the audio might not sync with the video properly because we're, so far, I think it's been going great. We're working a special solution. Uh, but Mr. Howard, let's see what we can do. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Scott. 31 years ago, I graduated from the Central Virginia Governor's School in the class of 1990. Since then, I studied computer science in college, worked as a teacher and a software engineer, joined a couple of Silicon Valley tech companies, Google and LinkedIn, before their IPOs, and even helped to build a startup that changed the mobile phone ecosystem that has become so ubiquitous in our lives. Today, I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft, where I help the company build technologies like artificial intelligence and supercomputers and lead our overall technology strategy and research efforts. Attending CVGS was one of the most important milestones in my life. It helped me to understand that I could have a career using science and technology to solve important problems. It gave me a very strong start on a journey, one I'm still on, to pursue the knowledge and skills necessary to do work that has meaningful impact. And perhaps most importantly, it gave me a boost in confidence I needed to dream big and to pursue those dreams with every ounce of my energy. Before I finished writing my first book, Reprogramming the American Dream, I visited Dr. Smith at CVGS. It was really great to see the school and teachers, and I agreed to donate copies to the school for the CVGS Alumni Book Award. The book itself is about the power of artificial intelligence to solve some of the world's most challenging problems and how the decisions that we make now about how AI is used can have enormous positive impacts on the future. The CVGS class of 2021 are graduating at an auspicious moment. The world is full of opportunities for you to use what you've learned and will learn in the future to solve challenging, thrillingly interesting problems and to serve your fellow human beings doing so. Congratulations to you all, and especially to the three winners of the 2021 Alumni Book Award, which Dr. Smith will now announce. So the faculty have the honor of selecting students for this award, and we select students who have excelled in CVGS courses, demonstrated independent and creative thought, and who have been active in service both to CVGS and in their base school communities. As it turns out, after Mr. Scott graciously recorded these comments for us, the faculty had such a challenging time identifying three winners that we decided to identify four. There are four very deserving students who will receive the Alumni Book Award, which comes with an autographed copy of Reprogramming the American Dream. And the four winners are Melanie Bowling. Dylan Myang. Andrew Chi. And Yimmy Ribbler. Congratulations, students. Your books will be waiting on the stage for you when you come up near the end of the ceremony. The next few awards are so special that the names of the winners are engraved on plates, which are then mounted on plaques that are on permanent display in the Governor's School Main Hall. We call the most prestigious academic award given to Governor's School students the Faculty Award of Excellence. Each year, the faculty has the very difficult task 
of selecting two seniors to receive this award. The students we select exemplify the academic maturity and high achievement that are the goals and hallmarks of the Governor School Program. We recognize these students for their consistent effort and self-discipline, their analytical thinking and mental flexibility, and their intrinsic motivation to make the most of the opportunities provided at the Governor's School. In addition to being included in our honors display, the CVGS Foundation provides a check for $1,000 to each of these winners. It is now my great pleasure to ask these two students to stand at their seats to be recognized as the winners of the CVGS Faculty Award of Excellence. The first student is Drew Flint. And the second student, Katie Salmon. Congratulations to both of you. Your medals will be here on stage for you and your checks will be with Mrs. McMillan. Now we move on to our next set of special awards and I've asked for past winners of these awards to send us videos to uh, provide some background on the awards. So we're gonna see how we do again. Uh, Mrs. Shiflett and Mr. Howard. Hello. My name is Ian Garland, and I'm a CVGS graduate from the class of 2020. The winners of the next several awards will also have their names engraved into the CVGS Permanent Honors Display and receive a $1,000 scholarship from the Governor's School Foundation. The first of these awards is one that I was honored to receive last year, the Brandy Nichols Leadership Award. This award, first established in 1993, is in honor and memory of Brandy Nichols, a former CVGS student. The Brandy Nichols Leadership Award is given by the faculty to a student who consistently demonstrates an optimistic outlook, initiative, and leadership throughout the many educational experiences here at CVGS. At this time, Dr. Smith will announce the 2021 winner of the Brandy Nichols Leadership Award. The 2021 Brandy Nichols Leadership Award winner will please stand when I call her name, and that student is Alicia Mays. Congratulations, Alicia. And we have another video. Hello, my name is Chris Webb. Like Ian, I'm a 2020 graduate of CVGS, and last year I was the recipient of the second award in this group, the Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship. The Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship was established in 2013 to commemorate a former CVGS student, Larby Mensa, and celebrate his life. The faculty bestowed this honor to the senior who most exemplifies the positive spirit, enthusiasm, and energetic friendliness that Larby demonstrated on a daily basis. Dr. Smith will now announce the 2021 winner of the Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship. I ask the following student to please stand to be recognized as the 2021 winner of the Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship, Mr. Ben Bankston. <laughs> now it's time for the announcement of the Governor School Foundation Scholarships, and these will be presented by Dr. Mr. Douglas. All right, hello again. In 1988, the Central Virginia Governor's School Foundation Board of Directors established a $500 scholarship to recognize an outstanding CVGS student who demonstrated academic promise, leadership potential, strong moral character. Due to the contributions of the CVGS families and business partners this year, the Foundation will award five $1,000 scholarships to five very remarkable students. These scholarship winners were selected after both a paper application and a Zoom interview with the selection committee. The members of the committee asked me to share with everyone how impressed they were with all the applicants and also how much they enjoyed the process and hearing from those who were interviewed. I will now announce the 2021 Foundation Scholarship winners, each of whom will receive $1,000 and have his or her name added to the permanent plaque commemorating their award and please stand when your name is announced. 
And the winners of the $1,000 Foundation Scholarship are Melanie Bowling, <laughs> Haley Earsing, <laughs> Hollins Pierpoint, <laughs> Andrew Chi, <laughs> and Katie Salmon. Thank you and congratulations. This is only the fourth year of the final scholarship we will announce this afternoon, the Ann C. Wells Memorial Scholarship for the Advancement of STEM Fields. The Ann C. Wells Scholarship provides $15,000 each for one male and one female winner. These funds help defray the costs of earning a STEM degree at a four-year college or university in the United States. Recipients are eligible to renew this award for three additional years for a total of $60,000 each. Before we share the names of the winners, we will hear a little information about Anne Caldwell Wells. Born and raised on a small farm outside Lynchburg, Anne helped her father with all manner of farming chores, even learning to drive the family tractor at a very young age. Anne's upbringing instilled in her both independence and an early understanding that abilities are unrelated to gender. Supported by a family that believed in education, Anne was an A student in chemistry and mathematics, graduating with honors from Lynchburg College in 1965. Anne was a lifelong learner, and she earned a master's degree in education from the University of Virginia when she was 55 years old. Anne started her career in education as a general science and chemistry teacher for Campbell County Schools. She served in that capacity for nearly 20 years. She was then promoted to supervisor of math and science where she served in the central office for another 16 years. So prior to being the director of the governor's school, I worked in the central office of the Lynchburg City Schools. And at one point, I was a supervisor of math, science and gifted education. And Ann was as well. So I got to work with Ann Wells and she was wonderful. She was student centered. She was dedicated and she was very, very bright. And David Wells, who was a 1989 graduate of the Governor's School and his wife, Sonia Moores Wells, established this scholarship to honor Anne. And at, the t at this time, I'm happy to share a video that was recorded for us by Mr. David Wells in which he will announce this year's winners of the Anne C. Wells Memorial Scholarship. Good afternoon, Central Virginia Governor's School. I'm David Wells, and a few years ago, I set up the Ann C. Wells Memorial Scholarship as a way to honor my mom. She was a lifelong teacher of chemistry and science in the Campbell County School District and, and an administrator after that in math and sciences. And she was a lifelong learner. And really, this is just to honor her legacy. So let me tell you, I get the easy job. Steve lets, gives me the easy job and lets me announce the winners, but I have no say in who won. The hard uh, job goes to the committee that the governor's school set up to administer and choose and select the winners. And they tell me that this year, like years past, was super hard in terms of the decision. And so first, I wanna send thanks to all of the applicants for your time and effort. Um, this is always a tough decision. So thank you for the time that you put in. Uh, without further ado, let me announce this year's uh, young woman winner is Ashley Loveless. And this year's young man winner is Michael Crickledorf. Thank you and congratulations to you both and good luck at your schools next year. I will say that Michael, I had a little bit of a hard swallow when I realized that the scholarship was going to someone going to tech, but you know, it's okay. And we wish you guys the best next year. Uh, enjoy your schools, take care. So clearly David went to that other school. Congratulations again to Ashley and Michael. It's now time to recognize the class of 2021. Our mission is to develop leaders and those leaders sit before you now. This is a remarkable group of students and as a group, these students have already accomplished remarkable things. Now, among their amazing accomplishments is acquiring a significant amount of money 
to help them pay for college. Now we survey our students each year to find out where they're going to go to school and how much grant and scholarship money they'll actually be able to take advantage of over the next four years. But before I share that amount, I want to note that we have a very special class here. We have several students who received full ride or full tuition scholarships, as well as other major competitive merit-based awards. And time will not permit me to go through the entire list, but I did want to uh, share just a few with you. We have a Johnson Scholar going to Washington and Lee, and a Park Scholar going to NC State. A University Achievement Scholar going to UVA, and a Volunteer Scholar to the University of Tennessee. A Presidential Leadership Scholar to Christopher Newport, and an Agnes Mulroney Scholar to the University of Pennsylvania. A Hopwood Scholar to the University of Lynchburg, and a Presidential Scholar to SUNY Oswego. This class actually has three STEM second century scholars going to JMU and a merit scholar going to Franklin University in Lugano, Switzerland. That's just to name a few. This list could go on and on. And in the next four years, the 68 members of this class will receive grant and scholarship money that adds up to over $1.8 million. And while these numbers are impressive, they're actually in line with the awards received from other graduating classes. Given decades of results like these, it's clear that many students benefit financially from working hard to take advantage of the opportunities provided at the Governor's School. But most of the benefits of attending the Governor's School are more difficult to measure. When we began our ceremony, Brooks shared the CVGS mission, a mission that focuses not only on knowledge and skills, but on leadership, perspective, and vision. This means CVGS must provide much more for our students than just the memorization of facts and a familiarity with techniques. Our students need to experience the application of knowledge, the interconnectedness of topics, and they need to learn to see both the big and small pictures of problem solving. But there is even more than that. The knowledge and skills our program provides aren't all related to STEM fields. Some of the most important lessons these students have learned these past two years are about organization and communication, dependability and resilience, leadership and teamwork. There is research that examines the correlation between an individual's ability to work effectively with others and their overall success. And as you might expect, there is a strong positive correlation. But as all these seniors know, correlation does not imply causation. Does not imply causation. Uh, and that's why I teach at the governor's school, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> does not imply causation. No, it doesn't. There might be other variables at play. I imagine that career success and working well with others might both be related to a willingness to work at becoming a more engaged, more thoughtful, more effective version of ourselves. And I have seen these students demonstrate that willingness. I have seen them become intentional about setting aside distractions to focus on the task at hand, improving their listening skills, seeking to see things from another's perspective. I have seen them reach out to help each other, work to be leaders in everyday interactions, and I have seen them cultivate a focus on the positive in the face of negatives. And for all these reasons, in addition to the remarkable amount of math and science and technology and research these students have learned, I know the future is very bright for the CVGS class of 2021. And speaking of research, there are studies that examine the effects of positivity, purpose, and social connectedness on happiness. Studies with p-values less 
than 0 0.05. And as all our seniors know, when the p-value's low, the null's got to go. Gotta go. And soon, so will these students. They will go out into the world beyond high school, but not quite yet. Right now, we have one more very important component of this special ceremony. And I hope you will pause with me and enjoy these moments. In these moments, we will celebrate these seniors, young people who have worked diligently to earn the right to wear the CVGS honor cords. We're proud of the class of 2021, proud of them for the challenges they have overcome and for all they have achieved. And now we encourage them onward and upward to all their futures hold. To the CVGS class of 2021. Now I think, Mr. Howard, should I take this off the stand? We're gonna strike some of the things from the stage and I need to give some instructions to the class. All right. Andrew Willard Arthur. Benjamin Payne Bankston. Benjamin Chadwick Barnett. <laughs> Melanie Gray Bowling. Destiny Sierra Brown Johnson. Nicholas James Brown. Lillian Alexandria Castro. Addison Nicole Chido. Aaron Robert Clark. Gavin Odell Cooper. Sarah Faye Culver. William McClellan Dewis. <laughs> Haley Michelle Earsing. Brooke Alexis Eby. <laughs> 
Samantha Lauren Elam. Andrew Robert Flint. Ryan Robert Gallagher. Anna Paula Gonzalez. Bryce Nathaniel Gunter. Jenny Lee Ham. Ann Francis Harrison. Samuel Lewis Hartless. Jade Rose Hatch. Janelee Ruth Hatch. Laura Andrea Hernandez. Samuel Kenneth Height. Aaron Travis Hobbs. Joshua Boyd Hubbard. Ariel Simone Jackson. Megan Amelia Knight. Michael Kenneth Crickledorf. Cynthia Annie Long. William Caulfield Langford. Adam Todd Lee. Emma Claire Limley. Thomas David Lipscomb.
Emma Faith Llewellyn. Ashley May Loveless. Morella Havron Lynch. Alicia Jade Mays. Stephen Michael Merholtz. Dylan Godfrey Yang. Anastasia Trinity Myers. John Zachary Knopfel. Gabrielle Caitlin Nixon. Ellen Faith Peterson. Sarah Hollins Pierpoint. Preston Xavier Pitzer. Wolfgang Thomas Block. Andrew Chi. Yemi Fung Ribbler. Jan I. Sali. Kathleen McClure Salmon. Jason Edward Sittler. Charles Edward Smallshaw. Faith Skyler Smith. <laughs> Daryl Connor Sneed.
Brooke Louise Spencer. Ashley Brooke Stage. <laughs> Abigail Renee Swanberg. Angelica James Thompson. <laughs> Joshua William Tips. <laughs> Landon Alyssa Tomlin. Randall Troy Trost. <laughs> Michaela Rose White. Sean Robert Weger. Morgan Sheree Zahabi. Congratulations to the CVGS class of 2021. You still have to come to school a couple more weeks, just to be clear. You still have the opportunity to come to school a couple more weeks. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate your helping us celebrate with these students. They are wonderful, but I know you already know that. Students, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks so much.